Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, my name is Adam Sandler, and welcome to So 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 Sandler's, the Sandman Movie Podcast. A gabagoo. Hello and welcome to So 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 Sandlerus, the Sandman movie podcast, a podcast where we discuss the movies of famed mama's boy, Adam Sandler. My name is Kerry Jones and as always I'm joined by my dearest friend and co-host, Matt Wollstenholm. Oh, thank you very much, Kerry. Great to be here once again with you this week. We're uh, for a good week, I think. I think it's going to be a good week. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. I think this is going to be a good week as well. I... I don't know how long we're going to be talking about this movie because it could be a three hour long podcast because last week we spoke for two hours about <laughs> Dirty Work. About, in hindsight, a funny but terrible movie. <laughs> that movie had no plot. It did, it but did. it was just... I'm not having that. We've seen some movies with no plot. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to allow you to say that Dirty Work didn't. I'm not having it. Oh, Yeah. We had to find out like, um, something about his dad or his uncle getting a new heart or something. There it was, was his a dad, wasn't it? There. His secret dad. Secret dad. Yeah. Um, just so people know, it is 1am for me here. So <laughs> <laughs> can we just get into it so I can oh, go to bed? Oh, we're cracking on. We're has <laughs> uh, got a big day. Um, so, Matt, this week's movie... The Waterboy. What, what's your history with this movie? This movie? Um, yeah. This is one... This is, So out of the three... I, well, sorry. This, that's, that's just a lie. Out of the four, I watched as a kid all the time. So that was like this, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, and Big Daddy. Yeah. I would say I've seen this the least, because it was probably on TV the least. Might be the funniest one. It's, oh, this is hilarious. It, it was so funny. I, I, I thought it was going to be a lot dumber than what it was. Yeah, I I had, like, because the accent, like, I know he obviously yeah. plays um, someone who is alluded to be, like, slightly mentally challenged in the movie. So I thought it was going to be a bit too on the nose, but it's it's not. It's really not that bad. No. Yeah. <laughs> this movie was good. Yeah. I really like this. Out of like the the main three that you said, then I think this is probably a lot funnier than Billy Madison. Yeah, and has a lot more heart than Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I'd say so. I just I don't think it's as good a movie as Happy Gilmore, but no, I'd say it's, I, it's it's easily just as funny. Yeah, I I, I agree there, and yeah. both sports comedy movies as well. So there's there's yeah, exactly. always that. Take your pick, so, all for American football. Has he done any other sports movies? Longest Yard is American. No, is he in a baseball got, movie? No, we've got the bench warmers coming up, though. With... Oh, he does, oh, he does play basketball in Grown Ups. Yeah, he does. That's a basketball <laughs> movie. They have a basketball game at the end of that. Um, Schneider and Spader in uh, the bench warmers. So yes. No, no doubt we'll... We'll get to that at some point. That's a, that is a funny movie. And is it John Hader? Is, it, is that his Bill name? Hader? No, John Hader. Napoleon Dynamite. Is he in it? Oh, yeah, he is in that. He's the other guy. Oh, okay. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, this week's movie, everyone, it is The Waterboy. Bobby Boucher was a lonely boy. Everybody else got friends, Mama. I just want some too. You don't have what they call the social skills. His only friend was his mama. He can hang out with whoever he wants, except you. And his only joy was his job. I'm a water boy. <laughs> Until one day. Must be something wrong with his medulla oblongata. He discovered his special gift. <laughs> Now, play football for this team. The world will feel his pain. Wow. Damn. Mm, 
That snake looks delicious. Somebody hurt you, my boy. You are so sexy. From the Wedding Singer team. Come give your mama a kiss. The Water Boy. The Waterboy is a 1998 American comedy film directed by Frank Karachi, starring Adam Sandler, Kathy Bates, Feruza Bulk, Henry Winkler and Jerry Reed. So, we have met the director, Frank Karachi, once before, as he was the director of The Wedding Singer. Yes. And he's popping back up a couple of times throughout this podcast. Adam Sandler is Adam Sandler. He's the whole reason that we're here. But this cast is, it's kind of ridiculous how big it is for the movie. Yeah, considering, well, actually, I'd say Adam Sandler's in this less than he is yeah. in the other movies. I think that does actually help. I think it helps. Um, the producer, Tim Hurley, he... he um, who Sorry, is also writer. a returner. Yeah, he, he's written everything with Sandler. He yeah. said this is the first movie where there wasn't pressure on Sandler to make everybody laugh because the scenes without him, with Kathy Bates, with Henry Winkler, they were all funny enough that it took a lot of pressure off Sandler to come in and be that funny guy every single day so he could focus more on the heart and the love story and the relationship with his mother and... Yeah, and you, you can you can tell as well because it it goes back to like when we were t- we talked about this I guess uh, on the wedding singer where we were saying like yeah. Drew Barrymore's scenes were obviously and Adam Sandler's in it a little bit less because they obviously trusted everybody else to have a good impact, and you can tell in this like the scenes where he's not in it, you don't notice it as much as the other movies. Like you can happily sit there and like ha- watch anyone else have a conversation in this, and it doesn't take anything away. The, yeah, and I think the main reason it doesn't take anything away is because. Well, Kathy Bates, she's Oscar winner. She, she's <laughs> yeah, Kathy nominated Bates, like she's multiple legendary times. Legendary actor, actress, yeah. actor, what, what? And an actor these days. Mis- Misery, Titanic. Yeah. She was in the Annie remake. Fried Green Tomatoes. <laughs> American Horror Story. She's in loads of stuff. She's from Kathy the, Bates. The, the Office. And then Henry Winkler. Oh, fuck, I forgot she's in The Office. She's in the American <laughs> Office, isn't she? Henry Winkler, he's probably most famous as the Fonz from Happy Days, but he was having a bit of a small resurgence around the 90s with this and Scream. He's... And uh, Little Nicky in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. And then he's he's having like his third renaissance now because he's in uh, Barry, that TV show. Oh, we get Harry Winkler. Henry Winkler again, is he making it? Has he come back on cycle? Um, no, he's he's in a TV show called Barry at the moment. Yeah, so I mean, he's popular again. He's oh, come back on yeah, the cycle. He, he's, like, he, he's back and... He's yeah. like fashion. Never goes away, yeah. just comes back around. No. <laughs> he, he comes back every decade for a couple of years. And, you yeah, can't but keep no. the Fonzie down. And then J- Jerry Reed as well. Yeah, Jerry Reed is actually... I didn't realise how massive he was, but like he's in so much shit. He's so famous. <laughs> Legendary and, and country he's singer. Legendary, yeah. Um, he, he wrote the theme song for Smoking the Bandit, which he starred in as well. Yeah, and then, got that yeah. trivia. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but bunch of different music. And then, sorry, let me just check uh, through the bulk. Her name sounded familiar when I read it, and I don't know why. Yeah, I thought I knew her more, because I, I think I only know her from this film, I'm pretty sure. But I feel like I've seen her in other stuff. Oh, or has she just got she, that she Courtney played... Love look going on? And that's that's just what yeah, I'm thinking it, of. It, it says here, uh, Bulk, Bulk is known for a portrayal of distinctive goth girl characters. Makes sense. But I don't. Do, do you remember the sequel to Return, uh, The Wizard of Oz called Return to Oz? I've heard of the movie, but I've never watched it. Apparently it's fucked. Well, well she played Dorothy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Shit. Uh, and then it's good role. American History X, The Water Boy, Almost Famous, Personal That's Velocity. What she's, in. she's in American History X. Yeah. Bad and Lieutenant. Uh, has a port- very special protocol. place to this podcast. It gave us a segment. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That that's it. <laughs> we'll uh, that's, we'll, that's we'll nice use that transition to go to our very first and famous segment, shall we? <laughs> that's a lovely little uh, segue. So, Matt, I have found a plot synopsis online, and you need to decide whether we are going to curb that blurb. And by curb that blurb, I mean if we if we like the uh, plot synopsis, we let it walk, let it walk free. If not, we'll take it out style, outside, make it bite, bite the side of the pavement and kick it in the back of the head, American History X style, and we'll curb that blurb. Okay? I'm ready. So I have found this plot synopsis for ROM, filmjabber.com. So Bobby Boucher, a socially inept 31-year-old from the swamps of Louisiana, is homeschooled and sheltered by his overprotective mama. His only contact with society is his water boy job for a college team where the players relentlessly make fun of him and his coach doesn't let him fight back. This all changes when Bobby gets a new coach who lets him stand up for himself. Bobby, f- Bobby finally unleashes years of pent-up rage and is transformed into the most devastating tackler on the team. Now Bobby has to learn how to play football, go to college and work with his relationship with criminal Vicky Valencourt all behind his mama's back. As, as much as, as much as I would love to have a good curb stomp when we are representing a cast member of American History X, I, uh, I've got to, I've got to let that one walk because that's pretty solid. That that's yeah. Th- that, that is the movie. That's the movie. Yeah, and it, it doesn't give too much away either. No, absolutely. Like, yeah, like you say, like good synopsis. It gets you ready for the movie, but it doesn't tell you exactly what's going to happen. And it's not it, quite it, a blurb where it's like, oh fucking like one line of the most vague thing you've ever heard oh fuck those ones i i hate those ones but no um there, there, there's a couple on imdb and they were like 16 paragraphs long so I, it was uh it, it, it was too much so i got this one off a uh, fucking Jabba. hell so do we both agree to let that um plot synopsis walk i think so yeah wonderful um before we get into this movie I've just got a couple of reviews here to... I can't speak. I think I've fallen asleep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm tripping over every single word. (laughs) So, I've got to... You can do this tomorrow if you want. (laughs) No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll, I'll power through. Um, So, yeah, I found a couple of reviews here. Um... This one is from Mike Massey from GoneWithTheTwins.com. And he said, This juvenile, unnecessary, and utterly pathetic madness can barely be considered a comedy. The jokes are so immature and flat that it mo- most closely resembles a tragedy. Nah. And I just, I want to say, fuck Mike Massey. Yeah, fuck Mike Massey. How, how, how can people, I, I don't get it. How, at this, at, I feel like at this point you don't go into an Adam Sandler movie and be like this is going to win an Oscar or like back then at least or be like this is going to be like the fucking Citizen Kane of comedy like yeah. no it's an Adam Sandler movie you know it's going to be immature you know exactly what you get like come so, down yeah <laughs> what, why are film snobs so far up their own ass they just can't sit down and just let because 80 they're minutes important, sh- Kerry. they shit deserve just... to be heard like yes <laughs> This movie was never going to win Oscars, but if you just go to the cinema, sit down, grab a popcorn, and just sit there and watch, you can enjoy yourself. And have a great laugh. Yeah. You, you don't need to hate life so much that you you go online and write shit like this. Like, it's it's not Adam Sandler's fault. <laughs> he, he just it's... wished... He, he just wished his mama loved him as much as uh, Kathy Bates loves... Bobby in this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this guy's just projecting. It's all right. It's okay, um, Mike Massey. <laughs> fuck this, Mike Massey. The water boy can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> uh, as well as critics' <laughs> reviews, I, I've also found a couple of audience reviews. So we've got half a star from uh, Sugar Flurb here, and he said, Complete dookie shit. Easily the wackest Adam Sandler movie. Send this to your baby mama when she asks for money. <laughs> 
What the fuck? <laughs> ah, you know what? There's some cooked cunts on the internet. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> 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 and then, from, then f- five star from Lecra Cra- Le Crazy Kid. Oh, there we go. Le Crazy Kid with a K. Um, okay, this movie single handedly changed my life. Now I am a better man, and I am now the water boy. This movie opened my mind to drink more water. Thank you, Adam Sandler. Can't argue with that. That is, you know what? We've changed someone's life to the better there. I think we could all stand to drink more water. This is everyone's daily reminder to go and have a glass of water. This this week I have drunk so much more water than I normally would. I'm, I'm drinking water right now. Jesus, I think I've drank like three liters of water in the last like six months. Some high quality Ooh. H2O. Um. So yeah, with those uh, reviews, Matt, Rotten Tomatoes. What percentage do you think the critics give this movie on Rotten Tomatoes? Well, as we know, this is a Sandler movie. It's not going to do well with the critics. Uh, there's no way it's over 40 so I'm going to go between 30 and 40 I'll go 32 33 fuck off (laughs) 33% Um, alright well fair enough Origin says they love the Sandman where do you think think they stand this is post Gilmore so this is easily it's going to be the opposite end of the spectrum this is going to be like 76 ish 71% Right, yeah, fair. No, and you I know th- what? I'll, yeah, I, I think that's the trend we're going to see. Yeah, for forever 100%. now. Because this, um, I've got so, this. I was going to save as a trivia later. Actually, no, fuck it. I'll, yeah, I'll just save it for later. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Budget of this movie was twenty three million dollars. What do you think this made at the worldwide box office? This would have done well, I think. Because he's, he's famous at this point, and he's like... Yeah, and we discovered a, a couple of weeks ago... We, we discovered a couple of weeks ago this was the fifth highest grossing movie of 1998. Yeah, good point. That is true. So, so it definitely did so, well. Yeah. What, what, what do you think it made at the box office? Did this do more than The Wedding Singer? Yeah. So The Wedding Singer was down in like 27th or something. Okay. And this was fifth for the whole year. Fifth for the whole year. After so Titanic. We got, got 90-98. Armageddon. Armageddon. Yeah. Oh, shit, that made a lot of money. Titanic. Um, well, it's a bit skewed because Titanic, it's like, all right, so it didn't make almost $2 billion in 1998, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anything under that, right? Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, I've actually got a piece of trivia to why this movie was fifth in the box office. Okay. And I don't know, but I'll, I'll keep that for later. I don't know if you've read it up. But at the wait, box office... Wait, oh, wait. One. Instead of the box office. How much did you say the the, um, the budget was? 23 million. 23. All right, I'm going to go just... It's going to make around 10 times. I'll go for like 210 mil. 190 mil. So Whoa, you, you're, you're in that ballpark. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it did well then. That's really you're in, well. You're in that ballpark, and it was the highest grossing sports comedy until the Longest Yard. And now I think Longest Yard and the Water Boy are one and two. Oh uh, really? Yeah, Sanders nice. got the top two spots for sports comedies at the box office. It's round his niche. <laughs> We have been recording for 18 minutes already. I don't know how. So, <laughs> can we get into the plot? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's rip through it. So, what I've done is I have gone to wikipedia.org and basically copy and pasted the whole thing. So, here we nice. go. Uh, Robert Bobby Boucher Jr. is a socially inept, stuttering and somewhat mentally challenged 31-year-old man serving as the waterboy for the University of Louisiana football program. As the players constantly bully Bobby, the Cougars head coach, Red Pielu, is that how you said? I've been practicing this. Red. Oh no, I had it before. Bailu. Bailu, yeah, because it's... um... Bailu. Well, it's French. Louisiana, so it's like yeah, yeah, so it's Frenchish. 
Beilu. Beilu. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Bayou, maybe, but probably Bayou. Re- Red Beilu. Is that what I said? Beilu. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, who has if, a anyone's little green... in New if anyone's in New Orleans, I'm sorry. All Louisiana in general. <laughs> um, who has a little green playbook, fires Barbie, claiming that he has been disruptive during the 18 years of his employment. So, yeah, this first scene. <laughs> yeah, what do we get? We get the opening in the movie. We get the Adam Sandler's the water boy. He comes out with his little fucking contraption on his back. Yep. And he's just got this, like... The, the little pump. And he's, yeah, the little water pump on his back. <laughs> Screw the water into the cup and he takes a step and he's like, it's clean, it's cold. Now that's what I call high quality H2O. For anyone wondering, <laughs> that is the voice <laughs> for the whole movie. <laughs> and in fairness, oh, it does, it does get a lot sometimes, but it's fucking hell. It's, it's not that bad. Uh, um, and then when he arrives to the stadium, he goes to set up his little water boy station, doesn't he? And Yeah, he's getting everything ready. <laughs> yeah, and as he's getting everything ready, he sees a letter for himself. <laughs> and he opens up this letter and it just says, eat shit and kill yourself. Signed, everybody. <laughs> And then yeah, it's like, like the suggestion. That is not box. what I call. <laughs> that is not what I call constructive criticism. <laughs> um, Fuck's sake! No. <laughs> and that fucking brutal. And that the, the, the biggest player comes over and well, he he grabs the water pump and just starts soaking Bobby Boucher. Yeah, he's like, like he's spraying <laughs> him with all his water, and he's, he says to him. I don't mind if you if you if you're gonna like give me shit. Don't waste the water. Just beat me up. <laughs> so, so, say what you want about my personal hygiene, but please don't waste the water. <laughs> and then yeah, um, the players decide to beat him up because because he said they could. Because fucking. And then the coach. Yeah. And then the coach is like, "Oh, he's a distraction. He needs to go." And then he just fires him on the spot yeah straight up and then he just drives home on his tractor yeah <laughs> just the most country move you can make just ride the John Deere down the road um so Bobby lives with his overprotective and extremely religious mother Helen who's played by Kathy Bates um so at, back in the house he just walks in there's a donkey there. They have a pet donkey called Steve living in the house. Pet, and then pet, um, don- pet Steve the donkey living in the front room, just chilling. <laughs> and then B- B- Bobby tells his mother, "He's like, M- Mama, I just la- lost my job as the uh, H2O uh, expert on uh, the football team." And she's like, "Oh, that's the best news I've heard all day." <laughs> yeah, so she's just the opposite. <laughs> He's devastated at losing this water boy job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he calls himself the water distribution engineer. Oh, such an uh, such an official title. And, and and then what what does he say? He's like, oh, m- mama, I was uh, th- thinking of uh, finding a job. What about a job with a new team? And then she's like, don't you raise your voice at me, Bobby Boucher. <laughs> He's like, um, mama, I, I wasn't raising my voice. I, I don't like concentration. I, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> If anyone, if anyone knows Star Signs, wants to confirm that for us, feel free. But I've fucking no idea. <laughs> and then we, we we learn about Vicky Valencourt because he's she's Valencourt. the one that told Bobby that he's a Virgo. Yeah, we get Feruza Balk, and that no, we get a flashback to that as kids because she's like. Bobby Boucher, oh, sorry, don't, you remember, yeah. don't you remember what your mama told you about young girls? Young girls are the devil. And we get a running theme in this of everything in the movie is the devil. <laughs> oh, and then after this first introduction, Bobby Boucher's in bed and he's watching the wrestling. Yeah, he's watching the pro wrestling. <laughs> and then Big Show's just on screen. And That's then, a good cameo. Yeah, Big Show yeah, is playing very, like... Very good cameo. Uh, what's his name in this movie? Um, Captain Insano. Captain Insano, that, that's the one. <laughs> uh, and then Bobby rings up and he's like, yeah, Cap- Captain Insano, do you need a 
what a boy? And then Captain <laughs> says, says like, how old are you, kid? 11, 12? And Bobby's like, no, sir, I'm 31. And then <laughs> the big show just rips the shit into him for being a 31-year-old man. Yeah, they just take the piss out of him and he's just, he's just on live TV on the phone and he's like, well, that's the dude that's definitely still a virgin. <laughs> um, yeah. it, then the next day, day I'm guessing, um, Bobby approaches Coach Klein, who is Henry Winkler of the South Central Louisiana State University Mud Dogs, and he is hired as the team's water boy. Um, Coach Klein starts to lose focus as he's explaining his plays um, for the upcoming games and season. So Bobby gives him some water and then he's complimented on the quality of the water he's just holding in his satchel. <laughs> yeah, so like, Henry Winkler's character like almost... Uh, it's like weird, he has like a moment, he gets dizzy and almost yeah. passes out. And then Adam Sandler, <laughs> the water boy, Bobby Boucher... Just whips out one of those collapsible cups. <laughs> From his uh, utility belt. <laughs> yeah, just whips it out, expands it, whips out a bottle and a flask of water and just serves him up on the spot. He's always oh. prepared. And then Henry Winkler's like, oh, that's uh, some, some good water. And then, some high quality H2O. That, that's some good water. It's better than the sh- stuff that we serve. And then we just get a shot of like this bucket. Just this cesspit. <laughs> <laughs> just this brown brown bucket looks like shit and then yeah. Bobby's like it is I- imperative that you hire me as your water boy <laughs> um, so yeah but Bobby Boucher is then hired as the water boy and then we, we meet the mud dogs um, the mud dogs have lost uh, 40 games in a row the cheerleaders are alcoholics and the players are forced to share equipment due to budget cuts so uh, as we introduce to the players we see the mascots and Chile is just drinking on the bleachers, and then two players they're like swapping cups from what are they called? We call them cups, but not drinking cups. Do you know like cricket cups? Oh, like a box. We yeah. call it a box. Box. Yeah. Um, a crotch box. <laughs> they, they have to share crotch boxes because, um, yeah, they have no equipment because. They're a shit team, and they're just su- super p- poor. Then we're Horrendous. introduced to, in this scene as well, we're introduced to Blake Clark as Farmer Klein. Blake yeah. Clark, he was in Shakes the Clown. He's coming back again and again and again. Yeah. And it, and in this movie, you can't understand what he says. No, he's just got the <laughs> thickest, the thickest Southern accent you could possibly imagine that he's just speaking gibberish the whole movie. I, I was... um. I watched this with subtitles, so I didn't miss any quotes because yeah. last week I, I missed so many quotes. And <laughs> it, it, it literally just says, Farmer Klein, Southern dialect. <laughs> Is anyone like, from Louisiana? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to translate that for us. Uh, That's how we should have done <laughs> the po- podcast. We should have done this whole episode as a Southern dialect. Fuck me, that would have been a big commitment. I, I'm going to do, <laughs> do do the next paragraph in a southern dialect. So, <laughs> do, you, do you get all of it? Yeah, I got it. Uh, um, but uh, as well as Blake Clark, we're introduced to Lawrence Gillard as well um, as Derek and. This is a player on the team. He's, he's the first one to, to accept Bobby Boucher. And I guess, even though he's not in it much, I guess he's Bobby's best friend, maybe? Yeah, he's his only friend in this movie. And they've got like two scenes together. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's um, Bob in The Walking Dead. <clears throat> Have you seen The Walking Dead? No, never bothered. Oh, don't. The happiest yeah, that's, day of, that's what everyone says. Ha- happiest day of my life is when I decided to stop watching The Walking Dead. Aren't they still making that as well? Yeah. Who for? Don't know. <laughs> and they got movies coming out and like seven spin offs and. Fuck. Um, Jesus. And then when his new teammates uh, a little bit teases Bobby, Coach Clyde encourages him to stand up for himself. So Peter Dante is back as. 
I'm guessing he's the captain, and this is the first appearance of Jonathan Lochran as well, who yeah. also pops up in all of Sanders' movies. He's the one who d- goes cross-eyed all the time. Yeah, he's he he's always. <laughs> I mean, he's so good at it. Like, he's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's the one with like the deep, the really deep voice. He's quite tall and he's quite big, and yeah. he's in uh, did, he's in quite a few of these movies. Did, did you know he's Sandler's personal assistant? Really? Yeah. No way, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, they, they, they're mates from when they were kids. So it's like, oh yeah, be my personal assistant. So I think he just answers emails and gets him coffee. But then he's in all these movies as well. Yeah, he's in all the old, he's in all the early movies. And he's in like Grown Ups and stuff. Um, so I think yeah, that's his uh, PA though, that's hilarious. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and then Coach Klein is like, oh... Uh, Bobby, you need to stand up for yourself, or these guys are going to walk all over you all season. I've seen it so many times before. Just, just, yeah, it's it's okay to fight back. So, yeah. remembering all the bullies he has put up with over the years, Bobby tackles the team's quarterback and knocks him out. So, they're about yeah, to they're, play. They're, they're in practice. Oh. They're taking a snap, and he just absolutely fucking cleans him out. <laughs> yeah, cl- cleans out. Just Peter comes Dante. over and folds him in half. <laughs> oh, what, what does Peter Dante say on the floor? Oh, oh, I don't know. No, I uh, doesn't Bobby Boucher says something to him on the floor, doesn't he? Uh, or is that I, later I, on? He's like, I, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. Coach Clan said it was fan. Is that what he yeah, says? So, told me to stand up for myself or something. <laughs> um. <laughs> so after this tackle, seeing Bush. Uh, Boucher's oh wait, attention. no, that's in, oh. that's that's the next scene when he says that. Oh uh, yeah, okay, in I the know. classroom, yeah. <laughs> Sim Boucher's potential client meets with Helen and tries to persuade her to let Bobby play on the team, but she refuses, saying it's too dangerous. So yeah, uh, Coach Klein asks Bobby to play for the team, and he's like, "No, my my mama said it's too." Uh, mom- no, actually, no, he doesn't. He says, but, but, my mama, but, but, my, but, my mama said, my mama, my, my, yeah, my, my mama, but, mama but, but. <laughs> 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 so Co- Coach Clyde's like, oh, let's go home and speak to mama and try to get her to. It's not even like stutter, though. It's just, he's just repeating the same sentence yeah. and he's just broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, back, back, back in the house, they have snake, snake for food. And then Just Coach Clan's like, oh, well. <laughs> fucking python. Co- Co- Coach Clan's like, um, w- what piece of the snake am I eating? And Helen's like, well, snakes don't really have pieces, but if I had to say something, it's probably the kneecap. But, yeah, then Coach Clan tries to... Snake knees. Tries to convince her to let Bobby play and go to university. And she's like... No, and here we find out that Bobby's dad went to the Peace Corps when he was young, when Bobby was still in the womb and died yeah. of dehydration. And Bo- what what does Bobby say here? He's like, um, I I I would have given my dad some water if I could, but I was all the way up in my mama's stomach. Yes, <laughs> he was still a baby. He was he wasn't even a person. He blames himself. And then, um, yeah. And then Klein convinces Bobby to play anyway, seeing that uh, Bobby is eager to attend college. So Klein says if he's on the team, he can attend college and get his degree. And this this is entices Bobby to join because he wants to go to college and get this education. And then as Coach Klein is leaving the room, he says, uh, when I was younger, my mother said not to get a tattoo of Roy Orbison, but what my mama don't know won't hurt her. And then he just... Drops his kegs and shows this tattoo in his ass. Just this little Roy Orbison tattoo. <laughs> um, and, and then it's so funny. It's just the way, like, it's just the way he delivers the line. He just walks over to the window, just <laughs> looking out into into the wilderness, just looking all serious, and just drops trow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, Bobby joins the team. So um, Bobby is struggling in his first practice until Coach Klein tells Bobby he needs to remember everyone who bullied him and used that as his tackling fuel. And then... Tackling fuel. Tackling fuel. Tackling fuel. 
so yeah, here he so tackles like somebody, times. and he says, "Who who does he tackle here?" Um, oh, he, he, it's just a bit part, but he sees he sees him as his old coach and Big Show, and does he? he... No. Oh, does he see his mum? No, he sees him as Peter Dante. Oh, is yeah, this one? Called, is that what he calls yeah. him, Needle Dick? Yeah, Needle Dick, Needle Dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that it, or is that later on? I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the, so Bobby completely destroys his player again, and this yeah. is where it says, uh, I didn't mean to hurt you. Coach told me I, to only pretend. And then af- after this, um, Bobby's in his first class in college, which he has chosen for the view. Um, his professor asks the class why alligators are so aggressive and Bobby believes he knows the answer and volunteers to share it with the class. And this is where Bobby says, M- M- Mama said alligators are only because they have all them teeth and no toothbrush. And you can't argue with that. I'd be pretty pissed off but I couldn't brush my teeth my whole life. <laughs> I'd be pretty fucking angry. But this is a great scene. He's just there, this homeschooled little country bump kid just can't do anything. Just, my mama told me. <laughs> and, and then he's like, my, my, oh, my, um, my mama said. It's because, and then another kid's like, it's because they've got an overgrown medulla oblongata. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A medulla oblongata. But that's not what mama said. And then... The professor asks them where happiness comes from. And then Bobby says, Mama said happiness comes from magical rays of sunshine when you're feeling blue. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the professor just goes, Well, Mama's wrong again. <laughs> Bobby goes, No, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong. And then <laughs> he just tackles him to the floor. <laughs> Fucking spares him. This 70-year-old. <laughs> he's just this fat old man. That does. That is dressed up as Colonel Sanders. He is Colonel Sanders. <laughs> uh, Bobby then tackles the professor because he insults him, and uh, because Coach Klein said it's so fine to fight back. Um, then we get a montage of uh, classic montage of football games. Yeah, we, we see uh, Bobby just destroying everybody. We, we see our friend Alan Covert again, who's sat with Clint Howard, who's he's a guy who's in everything. Like he, he's a yeah. black guy. Like, and he's. I think he's um, Ron Howard's brother. Yeah, he is. Sorry, I had this. Yeah, Clint Howard as Packer. Yeah. And then we get now we get the needle deck, needle deck, needle deck. Um, yeah. Then in another game, Bobby calls a timeout so he can give the refs some water to make sure he's hydrated. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, the the teammates still want nothing to do with him. And then in. The final game, number 62 says that he'll be playing with uh, Bobby's mama tonight. So Bobby seeks revenge. After 62 scores a touchdown, Bobby just drops, kicks him, and then he loses uh, the Bulldogs, the Mud Dogs, the game. Yeah, so they're they're on a 40-game losing streak, and they, they're, yeah. they're, what, they're, they're either about to win or they're about to, or they have the chance to win. <laughs> And then Bobby just sees this guy. He's like, nah, personal vengeance. Fuck this. Grabs <laughs> just... the ball, gives it to him. And so this guy runs down, scores a touchdown, and immediately just gets fucking flying <laughs> drop kicked. <laughs> just <laughs> kicks him straight in the head. Um, it's such, If you've ever seen The Longest Yard, it's like the great Carly just fucking yeah. <laughs> missile drop kicking those two guys. <laughs> uh, Bobby playing football allows him to reconnect with his felonous childhood crush Vicky Valencourt and Bobby invites yeah. her to a barbecue at his house over the weekend so yeah she, she's just she's come to see him at the stadium and she's like oh it's nice to see you I, I hope hope you like what you've done what I've done to your tractor and she's just fast and furious this tractor <laughs> supercharged this tractor <laughs> um, so yeah and then she's invited to a barbecue uh, at the barbecue, Helen and Vicky are not getting along. Vicky wants to be with Bobby, but Helen is sharing, sharing all his embarrassing secrets, such as his smelly feet, pee in the bed, and his cartoon pyjamas. Um, Helen then bans Bobby from ever seeing Vicky again. 
So yeah. So, yeah. Helen's just trying to embarrass gross shin. <laughs> that bed she is heinous. <laughs> it's so gross. Yep. It's like the darkest, brownest <laughs> pea stain. <laughs> and then Vicky's like, oh, I, I like him anyway, but she's just doing that to try and wind he- Helen up. Yeah. Um, she's getting under yeah. the skin. That, like, yeah, she it, gets that. kicked out. That's it. End of the scene. Bobby's all upset. Yeah, and um, because Bobby's been playing quite differently to everyone else, he manages to make the local news and coach Belu has found out about Bobby's new um but Bobby playing for the Mud Dogs. Um yeah. the Mud Dogs finally stop their losing streak when Bobby tackles a player who he sees as his mama. So this is where I see his mama and I was like Young girls are the devil. And then <laughs> after winning this game, the Mud Dogs throw a party and Bobby's invited and he's, he's finally getting involved with the rest of the team. Um, some of the teammates finally accept and Yeah, some of the teammates finally ex- accept him for who he yeah. is. Um, so he, go- he goes to the party and uh, one of my favourite running gags in this movie is when Bobby shows up somewhere dressed nicely. Um, somebody goes, nice suit. And Bobby goes, thank you. It, 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 it was my papa's. <laughs> yeah, that happens like three times in this. Um, <laughs> exact same scene. Uh, and then, <laughs> so he runs at the party and then um, uh, somebody asks him, oh, Bobby, do you want, want a beer? And he's like, I- I'll have a scotch and water, but hold the scotch. <laughs> and they're like, did you just make a joke? He's like, yes, I did make a joke. He's so proud of himself as well. <laughs> um, then Colonel Sanders is at, is at this house party, party as well. Yeah. And Bobby's like, oh, we have our test on reptiles this Friday. And this teacher's don't shit scared of Bobby. Yes. He's <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, yes, the, uh, the, the test is supposed to be on Friday if uh, th- that's okay with you. And then <laughs> th- these girls are hitting on Bobby as well. Yeah, yeah, so we get... This girl is... This is... Fuck me. The blonde one isn't... I don't know if she's in anything, but the girl he actually speaks to, she is in Two and a Half Men. As Charlie's girlfriend. Yeah, so she's... she's it's like, is it Chelsea? Chelsea, And she, yeah. she's in it for quite a bit towards the end, because I think they end up getting engaged or some shit. I, I she's think in they it, do. She's in a couple seasons towards the end of that run. Yeah. And yeah. She, she's going to get a boob reduction, but... Charlie wouldn't yes. let her. But no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if uh, Two and a Half Men will... Uh, if, if we'll get made today. Ah, uh, I then, mean, what? Well, nah, probably not. Uh, and then uh, this is what they say to him. He's like, uh, do you see a lot of girls, Bobby? He's like, I see a lot of girls and, and guys. And then she, the girl's like, you ever been with a girl and the guy at the same time? He's like, the other night, I, I was with my mama and Coach Klein at the same time. Then, after this, um, then, uh, 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 sorry, then yeah, after so, this we so get another montage of, of... <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was what? Late on mine. I was just saying that those girls are asking Bobby, like, oh, are you with guys or girls? Like, what? And so he's like, oh, I was with my mama and Coach Klein. And so, like, one girl's just like, you're a fucking freak. <laughs> <laughs> and just leaves, and the other girl's like, Oh, you're a real bad boy. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> gross. <laughs> hey, hey, at least there's no uh, dog fucking this week. No, Jesus Christ. I think we're over that now. Oh, we're not. Oh. I know for a fact. <laughs> we, we've got at least one more. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, we've got a running tally. After for this fuck's part- sake, how is, how is this? <laughs> I I, well, I reckon we can at least hit at least seven. If we get to double digit um, bestiality references in Adam Sandler movies, I'm over it. <laughs> right, okay. That, that's when we stop the podcast. Um, then after this, we get a montage of games, Bobby in school and Helen alone at home because yeah. she's upset that Bobby's not there anymore. Um, 
Bobby is invited to a football camp and to give kids some advice, but because Bobby Boucher is Bobby Boucher, he just rambles on about random shit. And then the head coach just finishes the whole meeting. He's like, and finally, kids, don't smoke crack. So you say this, head coach. Head coach, for anyone listening, is Lawrence Taylor. Famously, <laughs> might be arguably one of the best NFL players of all time. He was also famously a crackhead whilst playing. There's, there's literally rumours of... There's rumours, and I'm saying this with a very loose rumours of him... And I mean, this is like very unsubstantiated, but like he definitely, he he admits himself. He used to think like, like during games, he'd be in the huddle and they'd be like doing formations. And he was like, fuck, I can't wait to go home and smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this man was literally treating NFL players like children. He was like the most <laughs> dominant defensive player that's ever played. And he was a literal crackhead. <laughs> oh. So yeah, there's reports of him like, um doing crack on the sidelines, like, at games in the 80s. Oh, shit. And just I, going I, on the field and just murdering people. I did not know this. Yeah, so, like, um, that's... So, like, Lawrence Taylor, yeah. So, like, he's obviously rehabbed, and he's in this, and he's like, don't smoke crack, which <laughs> is fucking brilliant. <laughs> that adds le- levels to the joke. I thought it was funny it anyway. Does. No, yeah, that's, well, yeah, now you get it. That's better. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor, uh, absolute legend. Um, after this, Bobby runs into Vicky <laughs> Valencourt and they decide to drive home together. Bobby sneaks Vicky into his room and gives her glacier water as a gift. Vicky gives Bobby his first kiss and then shows him his first pair of boobs. Vicky is annoyed with Bobby because he doesn't make a move. Yeah, she gets, so he gives her the magic Alaskan always cold water. Yep. And it's like luminous blue. <laughs> From a glacier. It literally and looks then... like bleach. It's <laughs> This is quite a cute scene. Yeah. And then they share a kiss. It's nothing compared mm. to the wedding singer kiss, but still. No. And he's like, yeah, this is, the, that was, that was, that was my, my first, my first kiss. And then so she's <laughs> like, this is your first time seeing a pair of these. And just unzips that top and he is, he is gobsmacked. <laughs> gobsmacked. And he's like, I, I think I like those. Or whatever he said. But then he, he, Pussy's out because he thinks he can hear his mother awake. And then yeah. she storms off because she's like, oh, Bobby Boucher, you just need to grow up. You're always going to be a kid or whatever yeah, she says. She says, like, you're not even a man, like, not yet or any. Basically, just still acts like a kid. Yeah. Um, after this, the Mud Dogs need one more win to make it to the Bourbon Bowl. Uh, to get Bobby angry, Coach Klein says, what a sucks, Gatorade is better. Bobby uses this anger after seeing the entirety of the other team as Coach Klein singing what a sucks to his advantage and wins the Bulldogs of the games by scoring a touchdown. So yeah, another yeah, so game. We get here, I'd say, is probably one of the most famous scenes in the movie and one of the, one of the most quotable lines. It's just the Gatorade. It's just Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> what it sucks. Gatorade is better. <laughs> <laughs> And then just, water sucks. It really, really sucks. And he's just getting berated by the whole team. <laughs> uh, as Henry Winkler. And just goes and crazy. It, yeah. <laughs> but this uh, t- <laughs> this tactic works. And Bobby scores a touchdown. And then the Bulldogs win the game. And they are going to the... The Mud Dogs. Come on, Kerry. The, the Mud Dogs, sorry. Um, win the game... I, I've written Bulldogs, yeah. <laughs> um, the bull, was the Bulldogs the other team? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Fuck knows. The, well, anyway, no yeah, they win, they win, so then they, they get a chance to play in the Bourbon Bowl against the, the University of Louisiana. Yes. Which is the, the team, team that Bobby was um, kicked off at the start. On. Yeah. yeah, the Mud Dogs put on another party for. Oh wait, after this, I've just got a note that says "Towel Boy." Towel Boy. Towel Boy. Is there a line? I feel like there's a line in there. Oh, um, 
there's a news report. And then oh, the news, n- n- news <laughs> report, was, report was like, oh, yeah, um, say it was Michigan University. Some different, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like, um, Michigan University today uh, had too many injuries, so they thought they'd uh, try the water boy tactic, and they brought on their towel boy uh, to play the game. And then we just see the towel boy get knocked out within two seconds. He just gets clotheslined and flips upside down. <laughs> Okay, was there any reason you chose uh, Michigan University for that, though? It's because I'm wearing a, a, a Michigan top now. <laughs> um, uh, the Mud Dogs put on another party for winning um, and their success lately. And then we, we get Rob Schneider in his first role in a Sandler movie. Yeah, as the tr- as the uh, townie, townie, and his and famous then... line that is a uh, is a repeat. This is probably his most famous line. I'd say so. <laughs> you can <laughs> do it. You can do it. <laughs> um, I I watched an interview with Rob Schneider the other day, and he he was saying like Adam Sandler like r- rung him up, and he was like, oh, "I got a role for you." Uh, I just needed you to c- come in and do it. You're here for like three days, and he was like, "What is it? Like, I d- I don't know yet, but we'll just w- we'll figure it out on the day." And then this is what they figured out on the day. <laughs> well, so he just threw him in the movie. He was like, "Fuck it, yeah. this will be funny." <laughs> nice. you know, I yeah, love that. They were made from SNL, weren't they? So yeah, of course. But yeah, he showed up. He's like, "What do you want me to do?" He's like, "Oh, just do-, do whatever," and then. <laughs> <laughs> you you can do it is what came out yeah and then this character pops up well, Rob Schneider's gone from you can do it to a main part in the next movie yeah um it's literally a leading man in the movie yeah <laughs> gets his own spin off <laughs> <laughs> um oh shit yeah I didn't think of that. He's in Big Literally Daddy gets Next. His own spin-off. And then he gets his own movie. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> the, at, at this party, uh, Baylou and his team crash the Mud Dogs pep rally and reveal that the high school Bobby went to doesn't exist and that he was homeschooled. And his fake high school transcript makes him ineligible, ineligible for college and football. Yeah, this is a weird scene because he's kind of just sprung on you and he comes up and he's like, oh, Bobby's high school yeah. diploma is fake. And Bo- they're like, Bobby's is true. And he's like, well, I was homeschooled. I didn't know I needed one. And so no one really knows what's going on. Everyone's kind of confused. Everyone thinks Bobby's this massive cheater and he's yeah. like faked everything. But no one actually really knows what's going on because Bobby's like, I didn't do this. What the fuck? So then everybody just turns on Bobby. Yeah, if he gets Co- kicked off the team they all turn on him and then they're like, we can win this without him. Fuck him. We're still a team. We're still the Mud Dogs. Mud Dogs. Yeah. Mud Dogs. Um, yeah. Coach then... So yeah, Bobby's being kicked off the team and he can't play. But uh, next day, Coach Klein convinces the NCAA to let Bobby play if he can pass the GED exam. Um Coach Klein then apologizes to Bobby and admits to submitting the fake transcript because he wanted to. He was too desperate to get even with Baylou. And then we get another scene with Colonel Sanders here because Coach Klein gets angry and he just throws something out the window and he knocks out Colonel Sanders. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he throws like a fucking rock out of a window and just cleans <laughs> out Colonel Sanders. Um, so. <laughs> So yeah, Coach Klein completely faked the transcript just to get uh, Bobby on the team because he felt like that was the only way that the team could start winning. And then we find yeah. out that 20 years ago, Klein and Bailey were assistant coaches at the University of Louisiana. And then Bailey stole and took credits for Klein's playbook. He was uh, promoted and Klein was fired. Uh, Klein suffered a mental breakdown and became unable to come up with new plays. Yeah, so we yeah. get this like flashback scene where we get both head coaches, <laughs> and you know it's the seventies because they both have afros. Yeah, a- afros <laughs> for, and fu- for absolutely fu- no reason. 
<laughs> and, and they're both wearing flares and big collars and stuff. Yeah, um, just outrageous outfits. And then we find out that Belu's book of secrets was basically written by Klein, and it was stolen. Yeah, so Co- Coach Klein wrote all the plays in the the secret green playbook, and Bayou is the one who's just getting by on it all these years. Yeah, yeah. and since he got Nick, Coach Klein can't write anything else out. Um, then. This story convinces Bobby to help Klein get revenge on Bayou and prove himself to everyone. Bobby finally... Oh, yeah, okay. Then, back at the house, Bobby finally stands up to Helen while studying for the GED and angry, angrily revealing that he has been playing football, going to college and seeing Vicky and intends to continue doing so. Yeah. So I there's a there's a little thing in this I noticed and it was only when I noticed it this time is every time they cut to the house in the thing they have like um, the devil went down to Georgia playing in the background, right? But like, yeah. but every time and it's always the same part of the song as oh, well. Is it? I I, I didn't yeah. notice that. No, I um, noticed it because I was like, oh, I know this, and then it happened again, and I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> it was just the same bit of the song. The, the music in this is very good. There, there's some good country music in this. There's some very good songs in this um, yeah. film. But yeah. Um, yeah, so in this scene, Bobby, he like basically tells he's his mama, re- reading his go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's reading, then, uh, he's practicing for the test, and he just and like, oh, stands up oh, for himself, oh, I guess. Why are you reading? Like, reading is for the, for the devil, mama? <laughs> for the devil, mama? <laughs> Like, like everything else. And yeah, he just calls her out. And then, and then, and then <laughs> yeah, he, he storms out then. And then as he storms out, he goes, and by the way, mama, alligators are angry because of the mandula oblongata. The mandula <laughs> oblongata. <laughs> um, and he's what? And he's like, and this is show me your boobs. And I like them, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, he storms out, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, with, with, with all this study, studying, Bobby passes the exam, um, but Helen feigns a coma. Feeling he drove his mother to illness, Bobby stays in the hospital with her and rede- redecorates the hospital room to look like their home. So Yeah, yeah. so their, their house is their house for anyone. If you've not seen the movie, it's just full of just shit. random shit. Like, it's just full of clutter. Like, not like a hoarder, but, like, the walls are just full of random shit. And, and so, there's like, a... when Bobby, like, redecorates all this, it's all just horrible, like, old, tacky, <laughs> just shite. And, and St- Steve the horse is there. Steve the donkey turns up again uh, in the, yeah, in the yeah. hospital. But, yeah, um, we get a scene of Bobby doing his exam, and then, as he leaves the exam, please come up to him, like, oh, it's your mama, she's... She, she, she's... She's in, hospital, she's in yeah. the hospital. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Bo- Bobby Reed. Um, meanwhile, Vicky leads a gathering of fans to the hospital to convince him to play. So he's in hospital for a couple of days with his mama. And as this is happening, Vicky goes to different people around the town to try and convince them to come to the hospital to try and convince Bobby to come back and play in the final. Yeah, yeah. So she gathers like the whole town. They have like a little. Not like a mob, but like yeah. the crowd, I guess. They all go to the hospital out the window to try and convince him, but he's just basically looking after his mum and just make sure, making sure she's all right. So he tells everyone he yeah. can just keep it down so she can get some rest, basically. So she, she, just... grabs, she grabs Ron Ho's brother, Rob Schneider, yeah. eating a rabbit, and then <laughs> two topless cops. <laughs> yeah, so we get the two police officers that just like... We're like, Bobby, your mama's in the hospital, that's it. And then the next scene is them two. One of them opens the door, then the other one just saunters into the scene. They're both shirtless and getting real drunk in their outfits. Uh, yeah, and then they're, they're all at the hospital. <laughs> so and weird. Ron Howard's brother, he, he does a speech. And he's like, I'm not what you call a handsome man. And then I'm not what you call a funny yeah. man, aren't you? <laughs> And then he, he he's just like saying all this stuff to Bobby how he inspires, and then yeah. t- did you did you notice he grabbed boob? 
Yeah, he grabs. Yeah, <laughs> the last thing he does. Yeah, because she she grabs his hand out, and then um, yeah, you, like you said earlier, Bobby's like, "Oh, I'm not coming back. Can you k- keep it down? My mama is trying to sleep." And then Rob starts like, "Well, wake her up then. We've got a game to win." <laughs> and then obviously because she's faking it, she can hear everything, and she she can see how important that Bobby playing football is to this town the whole time. Um, yeah. Uh, so, m- moving on, um, seeing his son struggle to ignore his calling, Helen ends her fake it, illness. She tells Bobby the truth about his father, Robert Sr., who abandoned her while she was four months preg- pregnant with Bobby to have an affair with a voodoo priestess, priestess in New Orleans. Um, this led to Helen being constantly afraid that Bobby would leave her too. Deciding to put her son's happiness ahead of her own uh, selfishness, she encouraged him to play at the Bourbon Bowl. So so we get a nice little scene here, and um, yeah, Helen is sh- sharing this yeah. photo album with Bobby. So he turns to the first page, and he's like, oh, is that my dad? He's a handsome-looking guy. And he's like, no, that's not your dad. That was just pure lust. Look at him. He's one hot, <laughs> he's one, one hot piece of ass. I'm like, your dad's <laughs> on the next page, and it's just some... <laughs> Just this guy doing the Undertaker eyes with the fucking... <laughs> with the... It just looks so gross. <laughs> um, but no, th- th- this is quite a nice little scene. Um, Helen finally realises that she can't hold on to <clears throat> Bobby forever and that he needs to leave t- his own life and create his own story kind of thing. Yeah, she has this like moment of clarity where she realises he's he's an adult, basically. He has to live his own life. And she can't just be like, oh, because I'm lonely, I have to dominate all your time. And Correct. she, um, <laughs> but then we get one of the best lines <laughs> in the movie here, I think. And it's, he's reading the letters, like, from his dad. Yeah. And there's like, so we get like the, the what's the, the first letter is like, dearest Helen, um, I'm off to join the, uh, where is, where does he go to? I'm off to New Orleans to get a new job. Yeah. Yeah, so she's reading it out, and Bobby <laughs> Boucher looks at his mum and just goes, Mama, who's Helen? <laughs> <laughs> and she turns around and is just, Helen's my first name, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we just get these, like, three letters. The first one is, I'm, I'm getting a new job. Um, I, I miss you so I'm, much. <laughs> yeah. Second letter is like, dear Helen, I've got a job. Sorry, there's no money in this letter, but New Orleans is really expensive. And the next letter is, to whom it may concern, we've grown apart over these last six weeks. <laughs> I think it's time we went our separate ways. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, um, but yeah. Um, and then And then we get, yeah, then we get, Helen is just like, you need to go play football. You need to do what's right for you. And then that's at like yeah. what that's because it's New Year. Oh, so it's because it's New Year's Eve. That's right. And everyone's yeah. out celebrating and they're having this conversation. Correct. Yeah. Um, arriving at halftime, Bobby finds the mud dogs reminiscent about their time with him and losing by a score of 27 to nil. So Bobby. And Vicky arrive to the game on an airboat with his mother driving. Yeah. Oh, this is such a fun scene. I love this. The classic, like, Louisiana swamp. you just got the yeah. airboat. Let's fucking go. Uh, the, the, what does she... Like, when they're coming up to land, like, Mama, we're running out of water. And then she's like, don't don't worry about it. I know what to do. And <laughs> don't then she worry just... about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, yeah, she just drives across land in into the stadium. But in, in the stadium, it's it's half time. The mud dogs are losing twenty seven nil, and they're all in the change room. And they're like, "Remember that time, Bobby tackled the referee on accident?" And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, r- remember that time Bobby did so and so? And then Bobby just comes in. He's like, "Remember that time Bobby showed up at half time during the open ball?" And everyone's like, "Yeah," <laughs> from just loses it. <laughs> um, it's a good scene to be fair it's a good little just little it is I'm back bitches 
Uh, and then, yeah, he, he's, he's on the field. So on the field, um, Coach Belu gets the other team to play techniques that takes Bobby out of the game just to run down the clock. So they're doing little plays that... Well, I, I don't know American football. What, what are they doing? So that they're up 27 uh, nothing, And because Bobby plays defense and... So what they get to do is they get the quarterback to take a knee. So basically, you instead of like making a play, when you take a yeah. knee, it just like you run the clock down and you basically lose a yard. Right, but you don't okay. play like on offense. You just kind of just kind of nullify the that series. So it's like you could do it on first, second, and third, and fourth down if you really want. Um, but basically, it just makes sure that the defense can't play. Okay, and yeah. they do. They they want to run the clock down. Yeah. Yeah, so you could do this like in a real game with like eight minutes left and win, but no one ever would because it would be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, so they're, they're, the, what they're trying to do is just basically make it so that Bobby can't do anything. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I got that, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, using the same techniques of visualizing and attacking as Klein taught. Bobby. Bobby then turns the lesson back on him. Klein overcomes his fear of Belu and comes up with new plays. So well, Bobby tells Klein that he needs to visualise Belu. Yeah, so but um, As... like the whole thing in this movie is people like visualising what they're scared of. Yeah. And like overcoming that, I guess. Because it happens like to like three or four people in this. It happens to Bobby, it happens to Derek. Yeah, and it happens it ha- to the coach. Coach and is there I don't one know more? Who else? Oh no! Oh, I think I think I'm thinking of the ending scene where there's a tackle, right? And this, but it's not someone. Getting, no. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, so Bobby Bobby uses the same technique his coach taught him on to his help coach. It, so he's yeah yeah. So he's saying instead of imagining this guy that you're terrified of on the other side of the coach, Red, just imagine something that you're not scared of and everything will make it easier. So he just imagines him as having this little, this little like newborn baby head. So he's just like, "Ooh, could you, could you, little yeah. baby," oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and he's just doing that for like for five minutes. And then yeah, he comes up with some new plays, and then they uh, they run the field. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, but it's just like every time he keeps looking at him, it's just a different cute thing because he looks at him again, and he's just got the head of like it's like a golden retriever or some really very cute dog. And that's it. Um, so we, we, <laughs> I've lost Gary. <laughs> with, with, uh, with with the new plays, <laughs> the, <laughs> with the new plays, the mud dogs uh, begin to catch up, and then Coach yeah. Klein says to Derek, "Visualize an attack. Visualize an attack." And then Derek just <laughs> visualizes this little American football as the head of a clan member. <laughs> so yeah, he's taking a feet, he's taking kickoff, or it's a field goal or a kickoff, and he's drilling this ball, and he's like, "Okay, visualize something you're scared of," and this ball just transmorphs into a Ku Klux Klan hood. <laughs> um, and he just cl- he just absolutely puts his foot through it, scores I'm, three points. <laughs> I've got another note here, and it just says nipple rings. Yeah, no, this is um. <laughs> What's his name? The the farmer. Oh, yeah. And he's okay. just like celebrating and he just starts rubbing his nipples out of nowhere. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, um, the mud dogs are catching up and Belu uh, resorts to underhanded tactics to save his and the team's honour, like getting Bobby knocked out from an illegal tackle. Yeah, Bobby get the... What, they're coming all the way back and then... Bobby he scores a hit like, touchdown? Yeah, he scores, and then yeah. he gets hit like after the play's finished. And he gets like knocked out on the field. So everyone's like, knocked oh, out shit, no. yeah. Bobby's knocked out, like, we're going to lose, like, we've got nothing going on, everything's going shit. And then we get Vicky coming over with the, the ex machina, which is the magic Alaskan water. Yeah. Um, High quality H2O, it's always cold. Y- yeah, so uh, I, I got to hear... Um... Bobby's knocked out from a legal tackle. Bobby's then revived by drinking the glacier water from Vicky. 
Bobby's back in the field playing offence. He is up against the Cougars' biggest player, but manages to pass the ball that allows the Bulldogs to score one final touchdown at the final second. So in the final play yes. of the game, Bray Lou goes up to the biggest player and is like, I don't care what you got to do. Stab that guy if you have to, but make sure make sure they, they don't win the game. <laughs> It is fucked, yeah. He gets his biggest yeah. defender to go in and he's just like, fuck him. Just do what you have to. Make sure he can't win. And then they end up turning Bobby into the quarterback for the last play of the game and yeah. he ends up throwing the winning the winning touchdown to the actual to, quarterback who is uh, yeah, to Peter, Peter Dante. Dante. Yeah. And then, yeah, the... Mud Dogs win. Woo! M- Mud Dogs win. Uh, Mud Dogs win the Sorry, Bowl <laughs> 30 to 27, which is the score that Vicky... Um, predicted earlier on, and Bobby is. Whoa, 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 <laughs> Kerry! Wasn't a prediction. That was what the score was going to be. <laughs> that wasn't a guess. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> um, and Bobby is named the game's M- M- MVP, all to the yeah. devastation of Prelude and the Cougars. Sometime later, Bobby and Vicky get married. Robert Senior, who has since changed his name to Roberto makes a surprise appearance to convince Bobby to skip school and go to the NFL so he can share his son's newfound fame. He is tackled to the ground by an enra- enraged Helen to cheer to the cheer of to the, to the cheers of the <laughs> attendants. Bobby and Vicky leave on his lawnmower to consume their marriage. Consummate their marriage. Consume their marriage, eh? Yep. <laughs> All right, it's late. We'll give Kerry the benefit of the doubt. He's powering through here. <laughs> it is five past two. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's pretty much the end of the movie. We get they win the game. Bobby gets his like uh, they put him on the shoulders and he gets this little celebration. We get the wedding, which is nothing. It's just them what running out of the church and being married. Yeah, then and then Bobby's yeah, we just get Cash and Bates just smashing the shit out of Bobby's dad. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rob Schneider's back. Oh, no. Um, yeah, Bob, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bobby says, uh, Oh, what What does he say? He's like, ah. They, they kiss or something, and like, ah, I like that. And then Vicky's like, Just just wait until you. T- just wait until tonight. And Rob, Bobby's like, Oh, what, what, what's going to happen tonight? And then Rob <laughs> Schneider's like, like, You can do it. You can do it all night long. <laughs> Fuck, I love Rob Schneider. <laughs> yeah, man, it's his best bit of the movie, I reckon. <laughs> oh, oh, this... Sorry, but back to Rob Schneider. That interview I watched with him the other day, he was like, oh, yeah, I, I don't believe in this uh, nonsense that uh, ethnicities should just be allowed to play themselves. I feel like we're all human beings. We should all be allowed to play whatever we want. <laughs> Of course, Rob Schneider said that. I, I mean, he, he's like Rob the Rob Schneider he's... is a stapler. <laughs> um, but yeah, Rob, Rob Schneider's back. Rob the Schneider movie. is back, and he is a pencil eraser. <laughs> Rob Schneider is a carrot. <laughs> God, I oh. hope someone listening gets that reference. <laughs> you know, Poor Rob Schneider. But yeah, I just thought I should add, add that in. Oh, and Peter Dante is a massive racist and homophobe. In real life or in this movie? Yeah, no, in real life. Oh, really? Yeah, I found that out this week as well. What? Since when? I don't know. Probably since forever. He, he Why? went what to happened? a hotel. He went to a hotel, he was being racist, and then somebody told him that he was being racist, and he's like, you can't call me racist, I'm friends with Adam Sandler, I'll get him done here and he'll beat you up. <laughs> that doesn't sound real. <laughs> I, I promise you, it was on a TMZ. And that, TMZ, right, <laughs> I'm not having it. Nah, they can fuck off. Right. Matt, what we do on this podcast is we like to rate the movies we have watched with a certain amount of sandbags out of 10. And then we let the audience know what kind of flood those sandbags could stop. 
your highest rating so far is Happy Gilmo with a 9.4. And last week, you give Dirty Work a 6.7. What would you be giving the water boy this week? I'm going to give the water boy this week an 8.3. Ooh, 8.3. And, and what's all, what's the, re- the reason for that and and my sandbags i'm just gonna say yeah i thought this was a better movie sorry i thought happy gilmore was a better movie but i thought this is just as funny so yeah, i think it okay. deserves like a decently good rating but it's just not on that level of the actual movie <laughs> and the, the the flood that this could stop would be the flood of always cold glacial water from alaska oh wonderful um yeah that, what about that makes yourself, a lot Karen? of sense. So, my highest. <laughs> How would you rate right this movie? Is my highest is Happy Gilmore with an eight point six, and last week I gave Dirty Work a five point seven. Um, I don't think this was as good as Happy Gilmore, but I've got the Wedding Singer down as a seven point seven, and I think this was better than the Wedding Singer. I think this was what a lot better the than singer? the Wedding. We both give the wedding singer a seven point seven. Okay, yeah, this is definitely better than the wedding singer. So I think I'm gonna have to give this an eight point two. Ooh. Yep, it's in an eight point two. Yeah, and the flood that my eight point two sandbags could stop is the flood of shit water that. Uh, Coach Klein was originally given the <laughs> <laughs> mud dogs before oh, Jesus. Bobby Boucher came in to save the day. <laughs> um, Matt, your average scores up to a 5.21 and I am still sitting on a 4.89. So you're pulling away. I'm being a bit more generous than you. A bit more lenient. You are. Um, before we finish this up, I've got a couple of pieces of trivia here. Do you have anything? I think we went over the ones I had. <laughs> I, had a, I had a few things, but I think I've mentioned them already. Um, yes, you've mentioned everything. I think so, yeah. What, what you uh, said you had a bit? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, um, this and The Longest Yard are number one and two when it comes to sport comedies at the box office. Yeah. Um, the stadium used for the Mud Dog Stadium was a high school stadium somewhere in Flor- uh, yeah, in Florida. And the school was like, oh, yeah, you can film here as long as you do a complete refurb of the stadium after you're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Um, this movie was number five in the box office for the year. Yeah. Many people believe that that's because this movie was the first movie to show the trailer of The Phantom Menace. Yeah, I saw something about this. Is It was like, it wasn't the first, it wasn't when it first came out though, was it? It was like a few weeks after. Yeah, so... And then they... W- week two onwards. So people I mean, are saying, that, people are saying that it's made so much money because people are buying the... Ticket for the admission, watching the Phantom Menace trailer, and then fucking off, and then going. Well, which which did used to happen before. The yeah, internet. we had no YouTube. You had pretty much there was no outlet to watch that. On. Really, so, but and, I'm sa- I'm saying that, how much did it make in the opening weekend, though? Oh, I I, I don't know. Because um, this did all right though. Like if it, I feel yeah. like if it did all right in the opening weekend. Fair. Then but if it, if it did have... shit, if it did shit on the opening weekend, fair enough. I'll let you have that with the the Phantom Menace. But if it did all right, then maybe it was just a good movie. You know, <laughs> better fit of the doubt. I'll get in, get the numbers up on Box Office Mojo now. Um, so in its first weekend, um. Yeah, uh, original release. So, no, nah, it just says, okay, so it opened to 39 million at the box office this first weekend. That's pretty good. And then, yeah. Yeah. 
that's very good, especially for a comedy. Yeah. So forty mil for the opening weekend fuck, in the nineties. Fuck the Phantom Menace. <laughs> fuck Star Wars and fuck Star Wars fans. Absolutely fuck the Phantom Menace. If you've got anything, ah, oh, fuck him. Fuck you all. <laughs> Absolutely, um, all the prequels can suck my dick. Fuck off. That includes Avengers: The Sith. You can fucking stick that up your ass as well. It's an average movie that's made to look better because the previous two before it were absolute wank. Fuck off. <laughs> Not having it. Um, the Offerings song, original prankster, uses Rob Schneider's You Can Do It throughout. <laughs> Fuck, I love that um, line. Uh, then... Although yeah, I do I, believe the line is definitely better in Little Nicky. We'll get to that, though. I, I, I've actually got the, uh, in real life, Taylor spent years battling drug use, including crack. So I did yeah. know that, apparently. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is crazy. Um, so in the German version of this film, Adam Sandler is not dubbed by the normal guy who dubs Adam Sand- Sandler. So, oh, okay. So when they're dubbed to another language, it's usually just one actor and they follow that um the other actor, like, through their career. This was dubbed by uh, a guy called Matthias Knopp. And at the time, Knopp was successful with his character Super Richie, um, who was a kind of dumb-witted character, kind of like the Waterboy. So what basically what they did is they got this guy in to do the voice of Super Richie over this movie and pretend that this movie was part of the Super Richie canon kind of thing. So this this movie's just part of some, like, random German comic? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And then, um, yeah, but because this Super Richie was super famous, and then they tried to bring this into Super Richie, but this really pissed off the Germans. And it's, like, regarded as one of the worst dubs of all time. <laughs> It's not canon. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Fuck him. And and then a couple of goofs as well. Do you ha- do you have any goofs there? I don't think so. A, a, cu- a couple of your, in a flashback scene. Bobby's mum is seen cutting up a moose. The nearest moose moose population is well over a thousand miles away from Louisiana. Um, the snake at that Coach Klein, Bobby, and his mother eat is an anaconda native to the Amazon region and not found in Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana local law enforcement is shown wearing uniforms that say county sheriff. Louisiana has no counties. It has parishes. <laughs> the men- Mendula oblongata does not control anger, jealousy, and envy. It actually controls a respiratory drive. The, and then, the more you know. And then when Bobby was injured at the final game, NCAA rules state that he should have been sat out for at least one play rather than going straight back into it. The the very next play of the game, yeah. But that's um, me. That's yeah. The that's only, all I have. The only thing I've got is quite as a running theme. Adam Sandler was nominated for a Razzie in this. Didn't win the Razzie. Nominated for a Razzie for the worst actor. Saying that, did win a Blockbuster Entertainment Award for this movie though. So yeah. Nominated and... for a Razzie, shittest award of the year. Actually won an MTV award. You know, sounds the best, like best award. Someone's just year. doing this uh, for the sake of it. At this oh, point, yeah, yeah pe- people hate Sandler. We get it. Like, <laughs> like, don't blame him. It's not his fault. <laughs> blame yourself for not yeah. having a sense of humor. <laughs> that, honestly, that's all we can say. Um. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I've got nothing else with this. I'm pretty much. <laughs> it, it's two thirty. I'm I'm done. Yeah. Um, fucking shout out to everyone in this movie. It's a fucking legend. It's a great cast. I I don't think we've forgot anything. Um. No. Very good movie. Watch it. That's Watch the yeah. movie. Yeah, definitely recommend this one. Hundred percent. Would rock. Would um, will watch again soon. Matt, do you want, do you want to let the people know what we've got next week? 
before we move on to a very Let's special mini series. <laughs> well, we move on to our very special mini series. Do you want to briefly hit on our special mini series? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so in a couple of weeks' time, we are moving away from Adam Sandler for for a couple of episodes, and we are going to be celebrating one of his best friends, Rob Schneider, in our Taking a Deuce miniseries. That's funny because a deuce is another word for a shit. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone outside of America that doesn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get to there, we, we do have Juice Bigelow coming up, but we will have a brief interval next week. We've got some more Sandler, and it's one of his famous ones. We do have Big Daddy, which uh, Big, I'm pretty excited about. I, I, I fucking loved this as a kid. I'm excited for Big Daddy. I'm excited. I think this is probably my favourite Adam Sandler movie as a kid. I, I can't wait to talk about uh, Cole Sprouse in Riverdale, honestly. If you bring up Riverdale next week, I'm leaving. I... <laughs> I have seen every single episode of Riverdale. Why? It's the it's the worst show on TV. Honestly, everyone says that. Everyone's <laughs> like, "I'm like, why do you watch it? Because it's the worst thing I've ever seen." Oh, what do you honestly, mean? <laughs> it's like there's no continuity to it at all. They they've all got superpowers at the moment. Is Archie even the main character? Uh, kinda. What's the fucking point then? He's got he's got super strength right now. Of course he does. Why? Yeah. Um, because, I know what I don't care. Fuck him. No, no, because because Veronica's dad tried blowing him up. So a pipe oh. bomb under his bed to oh, give him superpowers. What did Betty do? Did she not fucking sort anything out? Come on, Bay, sort your shit out. She was in bed with him, and she got uh, powers where she can see people's auras. That's the shittest thing. And and <laughs> oh, ju- 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 lists Joe of superpowers you don't want to get. You, if you can have any superpower, being able to see someone's aura might be the worst <laughs> one. <laughs> she, she she has spent the last six episodes wearing um, sunglasses because people's auras hurt her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Like so, they're doing this to take the piss at this point, then surely. Oh yeah, yeah, like, right. R- Riverdale, it's 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 way too late for anybody to jump onto Riverdale. Yeah, but it is way too late for me to jump off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's never too late to jump off. Oh no, never it, too it's, late. It's finished. <laughs> Honestly, it just hooks me every single week. But uh, enough about <laughs> enough about <laughs> Riverdale. I, I need to get to bed. Um, you need to go to fucking sleep. If, if you want, follow us on our social medias on uh, Instagram and Twitter at So Sandra's Pod. Send us an email at to So Sandra's Pod at gmail dot com. Um, leave us a review on Apple and five stars on Spotify. It really helps us out. It lets other people see our, our podcast and let let lets other others listen to the shit that we're talking about. Yeah, so, somebody's like that. I must enjoy. Get your mates to just join in and just listen to us waffle absolute shit for two hours a week. Um, That's a great if you time. want, to gra- <laughs> grab your parents' iPhones and subscribe to us as well. <laughs> Guaranteed, guaranteed. They they do not know how to use the podcast app. <laughs> um, Fuck you know. But, but I've got that, nothing else to add. Yeah, just if you go. Yeah, to, yeah thanks for tuning in, this really week, guys. Bye. Yeah, if you want to, you want to. Um, sorry, come join us next week for some big daddy, and uh, let's let's be let's be nice and let Kerry fucking go and pass out. Right, Peace and yeah. love, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> but. Bye, everyone. Bye.